This is Amy Laura Hall. I am a professor at Duke University and this particular video I'm recording on, let's see, it's July 9th, I believe, somewhere around there. What day is it? Oh, hold on, I can figure this out. Yep, July 9th. All the days are blurring together during the pandemic. We are living through the plague of 2020, and I am recording videos for my courses I'm going to be teaching in the fall because I'm not going to be able to teach adequately in person. Um, so I'm going to record short videos that I know will be useful to courses to students in courses that I'm teaching in the fall. This particular video is going to be my attempt to begin a conversation about how to do a close reading of an image. So I often assign in my courses, undergraduate and graduate courses, I often assign films movies, music videos, uh, magazine covers, magazine articles, where students, where I ask students to do a close reading of an image. So the first thing I should say is that my understanding of a close reading is not necessarily going to fit with other faculty, other teachers, understandings of close readings. So if you are not in my class, please do not take this as gospel truth, as the only way to do a close reading. And also, I always end up answering lots of questions every time I teach on close reading in my classes. But I thought I'd begin that conversation online here. Okay, so a close reading, by my understanding, is attention to one particular small detail in a text, so a, a word, possibly a phrase, sometimes a whole sentence, depending on how long the paper, how many pages you're allowed, but for a two to three page close reading paper, really a close reading should focus on one detail and think about why that one detail. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with thinking about particular details in items that I just found. I gave myself 10 minutes to pick up things in my own house that I thought could be useful. So I did not spend a lot of time. I took about 10 minutes just thinking what could be helpful for explaining a close reading. Um, often when I'm teaching in person, I will just choose something in the room. Uh, one, one year, I did, I did bring this um, upstairs with me because this is actually something I talked about in a class one time. I just happened to carry this bag into my class on global health for the focus program at Duke University. I think this was last year. Yeah, it was last year. I happened to be carrying this bag with me and I just said, okay, let's do a close reading of this bag. I did it impromptu. And what I asked students to think about is why the designers working for Kate Spade, and I got this bag at, um, a university bookstore someplace else, um, but I, I love it. I love the bag. I love the love bag. But I asked students to think about why these particular colors, to think about, do a close reading of the design. So to think about why this particular uh, font, is that the right word? Um, why this particular font? Often students will correct me and give me different words that will help better try to explain what I'm trying to say. Um, why this particular font, I guess that's the right word, print, why this particular print? Um, what, does it, what does it do that the designer, and I guess that would be Kate Spade, um, I know she's no longer, 
alive. Um, but maybe it was Kate Spade who designed this Kate Spade bag. Why, why gold? There's a little, can you see there's, there's like a gold hint, gold, what word do we use? Um, a gold highlight? What, what word exactly should we use for what's happening to this L? And the gold on this L is not any place else on the L. So you may not be able to see, but this is, this is like a, a black print up here. Then there's what we call this. What would we call this particular color? And why this particular color first? What, so so I, have, I have students in my, in my classes often who are musicians, who are artists, who um, I've got computer science people in my classes, and they will be able to help one another think through what's going on in a print that makes something catch your eye. And so if I were going to write a two to three page paper about this particular design, I would focus on perhaps one color and why that one color is where it is. Like what, what's happening? Why this particular color here? Why that same color here? Why here? Um, some students in the past have had courses where they um, they associate, they, they, they write about psychological readings of particular colors. Um, and I discourage that uh, because often those psychological readings of particular colors assume a universal, assume that there's some sort of neurological response to particular colors that's across all times and all places. And I discourage any writing about a particular that purports to be universal to all human beings at all times. Like th this, this color connotes the sky. Like that would be a wrong way to think about it because this, this color is not the sky in Aberdeen, Scotland, at least not that I ever saw when I visited. Um, so yeah, I, I discourage a kind of writing about particulars that wouldn't take into account the particularity of the time that this um, bag was made. So when did this designer create this image? What was the connotation at this time in the United States for this particular print? So you have to do some research in order to think through the particular time in which the item was created or the artist created the item. I just used passive voice. So let me say it again, an active voice. Think about the particulars of the time during which Kate Spade created this image, okay? Yeah, all right. Um, okay, totally different item, a Christmas spode plate. So I won't go into all of the um, funny family dynamics about Christmas food, but Christmas food is not my all-time favorite pattern. But I happen, for reasons I won't go into, because um, this isn't that kind of video, uh, have a lot. I have a lot of Christmas food, and um, one thing I would I would ask about the design of Christmas food. If I were going to focus on a detail, if I were going to do a close reading of the, the little plate, like Christmas spode, is I would think why this why this particular color of green? Like maybe think about why this particular green. There'd be different greens to use, different shades of green. I'm not an artist, but some of you may be. Um, think about why this particular green, and could you help other students in the class? think about why, what, what, what particular color of green this is. Um, I understand in the light, it's not gonna be quite the same. And in a class, I would pass this around. Uh, when, one thing I would, I would ask students to consider, ask people to consider is, uh, what is this particular little image? 
I, I guess maybe mistletoe. I'm doing this totally on the fly. I do not, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't plan on, plan on exactly what to say, but I think maybe that's mistletoe. Um, why, why the, why the mistletoe and why there? Why there on the plate? Um, also, you might think what else could the artist who designed this um, Made in England Christmas tree spode, what else instead? What, what could the artist have done instead? Because that's one way to think about a close reading of an image is what else could have been there? Instead, like, so why, if this is mistletoe, why mistletoe and not something else? What else could have been there? And I don't mean like daisies, like daisies obviously would not fit with the theme, but okay, what else could have been here that would have connoted something slightly different than whatever this is? I'm going to just, if I were writing a paper, I'd want to look up what that was. I'm going to pretend right now I know it's mistletoe, but I don't. Um, also, with, you, could, you could focus on this little bird. Why this particular little bird? What kind of bird is this? What, what, what era of England? What era is this Christmas spode design meant to evoke? Uh, is that the right word? What era is this supposed to to um, draw to mind. Another thing to consider would be Santa Claus, I guess, or it, would that be the right word? This is an English design. Would Santa Claus be the right word? So any of these details would make for a close reading of a particular design and thinking about why, why any of these one details um, and how how this particular detail, like if I were gonna gonna just stick with with whatever we're gonna call this thing on the top of the tree, why this particular way of drawing this character, given what's happening overall in this plate, just on this one plate. All right, completely different thing. This. And now this, when I, when I thought, okay, I'm going to do a little video of um, images, this, this, I thought I definitely have to find this book. A friend of mine gave me this book. I got about halfway through before COVID and I'm planning on reading the rest. So, so this, this book, Pre-Code Hollywood um, by Thomas Doherty, Sex, Immorality and Insurrection in American Cinema, 1930 to 1934. Sometimes students wonder, how am I going to write a three-page paper on only one detail in one image? Well, okay, this brilliant person wrote a whole, uh, how long, 400 and, 423 pages, including the index, on just these few years in just Hollywood. He wasn't doing the whole of all cinema everywhere. So I promise you, close readings are a scholarly thing to do, and you will have enough to think about if you focus on just a particular um, facet of one image. And this, this I thought would be a really like what we would say in Texas, shooting fish in the barrel, meaning it's really easy to do a close reading of this because the image, um, I'll read to you from the back. So, so on the back of this book, let you see the whole cover. <laughs> it's so, so great. So over the top. Okay. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be over the top. All right. So I'm going to read to you the description of the cover illustration. In 1940, Paramount photographer, Whitey Schaefer staged a sinful still life entitled Thou Shalt Not, a sly depiction of what the production code administration censored out of Hollywood's official publicity shots. The forbidden images include the law defeated. 
the inside of a thigh. Not a chicken thigh. Um, lace lingerie. I wonder if, I'd want to find out more, like was lace lingerie in particular a problem? Like could you be in lingerie, but it was supposed to be a house coat with no lace or something? Anyway, um, that's in the book. Uh, a dead man, no dead men. Um, narcotics, drinking an exposed bosom. And I think that's really, uh, yeah, that's, that probably is the language of the code. Gambling, pointing a gun, and in particular, a Tommy gun. So evidently a Tommy gun was in particular a, um, against the code. So this is courtesy of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Um, so you could do, you could do, you wouldn't have to do much for a close reading of this, right? Like you, you would look at the code, you would, you would look at the image, you would find what, what's the description of the cover. Now here would be a bad close reading on an image. And I've gotten some of these. I, I love my students. If you hear yourself, in one of my complaints, please know it's not you. It was probably somebody else, and I still love you. Okay, but I have received <laughs> received um, close reading papers that would go like this. The woman has a cigarette in her mouth. Cigarettes, according to psychoanalytic readings, involve something phallic. So the cigarette is probably a phallic symbol. I wonder, when was this image created? Who created the image? Like this is, this I've received actual papers like this, where you're like, uh, you turn the book over and you read the description of the, like, don't, don't write a close reading paper where you're, where you're surmising something that an hour of research would actually help you actually write a close reading as opposed to, um, you know, I, I wonder why she's holding a glass. Well, fi find out, like you could, you, you can find out. So, all right, but you get the, you get the idea that this, this particular image for the, the that, um, the publisher, uh, and the writer, hopefully the author had a say in this, I bet he did, um, was they this image was created as a, as a mockery of a mockery a I'm sorry a sly depiction um, related to the production code administration's censoring um, yeah okay something completely different a post-it note collection that I just found in the attic that my mother gave me when I went off to Emory University. I'm pretty sure that's right. She may have given me this post-it note collection that I used a lot of when I went to Yale. I'm not sure if it was when I was in college or I need to look it up. So if I were gonna do a close reading of this, I would need to look up the little tiny numbers here. It says Dale. 033, uh, the at would be, um, or is that copyright? RPP, recycled paper products, maybe? I'd need to do the research on this instead of saying, I wonder what RPP stands for. Like, no, you, you look it up, but you think about what, what year was this created? And um, I just happened to have this on my desk because I just found it in the attic. So I'm going through the attic, finding all sorts of interesting things. Oh my gosh, I could do a whole lecture on the interesting things I found in my attic. But here's one of the interesting things I found. Now, here's what the, what the print said, or here's what the words, here are the words. Used to be, it was a man's world and a woman's place was in the home, dot, dot, dot. They can kiss that, oh heck. I'm a grown up, I can say the word, shit, goodbye. They can kiss that shit goodbye, period. Okay, now, what I think is really interesting is to th think about the optics of this, think about the visuals. So it's, th think about the, um, how, how the writing is. So this is in cursive. 
what does it convey differently if it's in cursive than if it were in, um, what would you say, print? And again, I just, I picked this up. I gave myself 10 minutes. Um, but So it's in cursive. Now, the fact that it's in cursive, I, I, would, I would think possibly what's going on is it softens the feminist message such that a preacher's wife might pick it up and give it to her daughter, which my mom did. My mom actually is not a typical preacher's wife, but still, she gave me um, the words, they can kiss that shit goodbye, but the words are written in cursive. Can you see this? I'm like, I need to look at the screen so I can. Also, look at the, look at the particular smile. The, sm the smile there on this little cartoon woman and her posture. So how would it be different if this little cartoon of a woman were going, oh, I'm probably not supposed to do that. That probably breaks the Facebook code. <laughs> oh, oh, eh, well, I'll just, you didn't see that. But what would it what you what would it be how would it be different now I'm feeling very self-conscious how would it be different if this particular cartoon character were um shooting the bird I can say that hopefully I did that quickly enough and caught myself quickly enough that I'm not going to be censored on <laughs> Facebook when I post this. All right, how would it be different if she were going like this? How would it be different if this this little this little they can kiss that shit goodbye? If she were if she were sitting up straight because she's she's kind of hunched, right? She's kind of. So how would it how would it be different? So that that would be one way to do a close reading of this little post-it note, the image. The, the, the design of the image. Okay. Uh, children's book that was one of my younger daughter's favorites. Actually, I think my older daughter liked this one too. Um, this is, I should, I should give credit, Heather Amory and Stephen Cartwright. They have a very sweet little thing that they do through their um, illustrated books where you find a duck on every page. You can Think about why why a duck why in particular a duck for kids to find uh and maybe i i would say how did they convey through the sheep's eyes the story like look look at that cartoonists amaze me it just i find cartoonists to be like magicians like how do they do this they're magical people um think about how the cartoonist has created this image for the cover in a way that would catch maybe a parent's eye maybe a children's a child's eye um why this particular little bird why on the sheep's ear? How would it be different if this bird were red? Maybe. Why this particular color bird? Why, how it would be different if the bird were sitting on top of the sheep's head, like right here. Because you know, these illustrators, they go through a whole lot of work to figure out particular details for the cover. Because they know people judge a book by its cover. So think, think about how they decided these particular images. Maybe you could do a close reading of just, just the birds on the cover or just the sheep's eyes. But for a close reading for, that's two or three pages, even a close reading that's three to four pages, you don't want to take on the whole entire cover. You want to focus on a particular aspect. You could focus on the print again the the font maybe i'll say because i think that's the right word to use okay one of my favorite illustrators of all time maurice sendak a kiss for little bear um 
oh gosh, I should, yeah. A Kiss for Little Bear, Maurice Sendak, um, by Elsa Homeland Minerick. Um, is, is, she's the one who wrote the stories that Maurice Sendak drew the amazing pictures for. I, this is one of my favorite, favorite books ever. And um, it's actually a book about images. So I'll let you I'll let you go look for a kiss for a little bear, but maybe just 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 for the cover. Why why did Elsa Homeland Minerick choose? Um, I think this is a hen. I think it's is that right? Yeah, it's it's a hen. Um, <laughs> so what? Why a hen as the the scold? in the story and what's going on with Little Bear's hat. There's so many ways to do a close reading of this cover. Um, again, you could focus on the font and yeah, it's supposed to be a book for early readers and I could spend hours just thinking about the cover and I have a PhD from Yale and tenure at Duke and I love this so much and I could do a lot with just the cover thinking about what's happening on the cover to entice a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, an older sibling who is helping somebody younger than them learn how to read. Last, no, two, two more items, quick. How long am I going? Okay, um, so this, this is something else I found in the attic. <laughs> this is so awful. A teen girl's guide. The. No, no, no. Not a. Not a teen girl's guide to success. But the. The teen girl's guide to success. Maybe that. Well, that's for a different video. That's my reading words. Stick to the images. Um, so I think just one image what does this image connote for you? Um, you can start, well, first of all, just, you can do your first impressions, but your first impressions are not your paper. So, so you, you, for a close reading paper, write down your first impressions about, about an image, but you need to do research about the year, the context, the publisher, um, to be able to have an educated close reading not a, well, she has blonde hair, so she looks Nordic. It's like, okay, yeah, what, but that, I get it, I get it. Um, but what year was this published? Which I should look up. Okay, so, so to, to write an educated close reading of the image, I need to know that this was from the New American Library my air conditioning just came on. I hope you can hear me. Um, the New American Library, it is lovingly dedicated to a special young lady. Again, if I were doing close reading of words, um, Erin Marjabelle Anderson. This is from 1982. I wonder who gave me this. From 1982 and publishing 1633 Broadway, New York, New York, first printing November, 1982. So I, I this could be a very helpful book. I'm not trying to be critical of Marjabelle Young Stewart. Hopefully um, no one's gonna be offended by my asking to do a close reading. It's just, it's so, it's so of a particular era and because it's an era in which I was willing, 1982. Anyway, I'm, I'm laughing because this was a book someone gave me to help me be successful. And it's, it's, it's. Is it her eyes? What is it about this image that connotes a, like a, I don't, I'll stop. Think about why they chose this particular image for a book about the teen girls Guide to Social Success. Oh, Social Success. Social Success. Yeah. Why this particular font? 
think about that, why this particular font. And you could also think about what she's wearing. Does it matter what she's wearing? Why does it not matter what she's wearing? Because she's wearing her hair, right? I mean, why, why the whole, it's the whole, this, they chose, they didn't just go outside and be like, here's a woman, let's take a picture of her. They chose this particular image, the publishers did, to catch somebody's eye. Who were they trying to catch? What's going on in the image? Um, yeah, particulars about the font, particulars about the hairstyle, perhaps, the color of hair, the color of skin. Um, yes, you could you could write a close reading about why this image in 1982 would have connoted possibly for the publishers, in the publisher's mind, a generic the Teen Girl's Guide to Success. I will say that doing that kind of reading of this image will be easy and I'd rather students find something a little bit quirkier because it's pretty obvious this image is playing on a particular understanding of what generic female social success looks like and that is white and blonde with uh, a particular kind of makeup on. Yeah, that, that I get. So you can write a close reading on that, but eventually over the course of the semester, I'm gonna hope that you will um, be able to do something a, a little bit quirkier, something, something that some detail that you find curious, not a detail that you find obviously political. And I'm, I'm y'all know me. Well, some of you don't know me, but I'm, I'm, I'm all about politics. Um, I do political readings of everything. But in order to, in order, if let's, I'll put it this way. If I started out a lecture in class and said, "Here is generic woman." who is reading a book, girl, girl, yeah, girl, um, girl. Here is a generic book about teen girls' social success. Obviously, it is not a generic book about all girls' teenage social success because they've chosen for the cover to have a white woman, white girl, she kind of looks like a grown up, but a white, whatever, uh, person um, with blonde hair. That proves the publishers didn't really understand that teen girls come in other colors. Like I, I could do that, but it wouldn't necessarily pull in and incite in and um, encourage the curiosity of students in the class. Some students would be like, yeah, that's pretty obvious. That book is a book we shouldn't even pay attention to because it's racist. Some students will be like, what's wrong with that? What's, there's, a, there's a perfectly nice girl on this cover and you're, you're what are you calling her, something awful? So I, I, I'll have to say that starting up front with a political reading um, has not, I, I haven't found it to be terribly helpful in the classroom if what I'm trying to get students to do is think critically about less obvious images. Okay. Here is, okay, anthropology, I've got, I won't even go into all of my self-confessions, all of my confessions about how much I have a weakness for anthropology bags, but if I get anything from anthropology, I keep the bags and decorate the house with them. But, um, so I just happen to have a leftover anthropology bag in my little home office here, and but here, here's something the anthropology had their their genius designers like Maurice Sendak, genius illustrator, Elsa Homeland Minerick, genius writer, and um, the people who created the Naughty Sheep. I'll sort of say, I'll say, yay, Christmas boat. Okay. Um they're they they design things in a particular way. So here you have on one side birds and Think about what, I mean, it's not just birds. I've got other things with birds on them. Um, it's not just birds. Birds, what, what's going on? What kind of birds are these supposed to evoke? What was the artist 
What, what's going on with the colors? Think about the colors. This particular color of blue, blue-green maybe, can you see? Um, the ways that the flowers and the birds interact on this. Okay, so this is on one side of the bag. On the other side of the bag, are dachshunds. And think about the contrast that the designers for anthropology bags have done in terms of these two different, uh, what do we call it, the cover of a bag, two different covers of a bag. So you could, for a close reading of this, this bag, you, I think you'd have to actually, I'm, I'm thinking that in this particular case, you'd have to do a close reading of the two different covers to think about why these two different patterns of design. You can tell I'm not, I'm not an art historian person. Um, but some of you will know the language of art and you'll know the right words. And in a classroom setting, I would be helping students help one another figure out what words to use. But think about the different depictions of animals, right? These are, these are depictions of animals, different depictions of animals on one bag. And what the designers for anthropology were doing with this one bag. They've, they've done different images on either side too, actually of the sides. Yeah. Okay. That was 37 minutes of close reading of images and I will continue to answer questions. I'm going to end up using this video for my teaching purposes in the fall, but hopefully this would be interesting to other people. So I'll post it on Facebook. And um, if you have observations about the details and any of the things that I've, that I've put here, um, please feel free to post them. Okay, just don't do a close reading of my reading glasses. That's not allowed. I'm joking. Of course, you can do a close reading of my reading glasses. Okay.